Hello, my name is Zachary Nichols, and I'm currently a fourth year student of architecture at Ball State University. Through most of my architectural studies, I have noticed there's a need for site analysis or environmental design. However, these preliminary elements of site analysis and this environmental design doesn't seem to leave my sketchbook. So as an avid user of Rhino and Grasshopper, I would like to bring these things to life using the plugin of Ladybug. If we go to Ladybug's website, we can see how useful this will be for us, as it helps designers create an environmentally conscious architectural design and it will lead designers to make high performance design decisions. Another key component to this plugin is EPW files. And this is basically the data that make the components run, which include sunlight, wind, where it's at on the earth, rain, and they're pretty simple to get. So if we go back into Ladybug's website, we can quite literally search EPW Ladybug, and it will bring us to these maps that have their own data for which file we want. So I chose one from Montreal up here, Delaware County, which is where Muncie's at, which is where Ball State's at, and then El Paso, Texas, which create three different environments for us to work in. Now that we know what EPW files are and where to get them, let's talk about the setup for this grasshopper definition. So as you can see on the left-hand side, there's these file paths, which are basically subholders for the EPW files that sit inside my own file folders. And I set them up in this arrangement so that I can connect them to my sky matrix and other components easily without having to restructure them. We then take these EPW files and put them into our cumulative sky matrix, which will give us the sun's radiance for every hour of the year. But we don't want every hour of the year. We want one hour. For one day. So we take this DOI and HOI, which is the hour of year and the day of year, and input what, what day and year we want. So for instance, I put June 21st at 12 o'clock. So when I went to go select a specific sky matrix, I chose a specific day, which is June 21st at 12 p.m., which is the day after the summer solstice when the sun is at its highest. And I did this for three other days as well, being September 21st, March 21st, and December 21st. And we'll see why here in a second. After you have your sky matrix set up and your geometry set up, you can start plugging stuff into your radiation analysis, which is right here. As you can see, I don't have the north arrow set up because it's automatically set up in the y direction, which is what my geometry is set up in. So there's no need to put in another vector. The geometry here goes to my lofted surface, which I am using for my roof. Below that is context, which is the surrounding area of your geometry, which are, which are originally NURB surfaces that I've referenced as B-reps. The grid size depends on what unit you're working in within Rhino. So for instance, I was working within feet, so each one of my grids is exactly three feet apart from one another. This distance from base is basically how much you want to offset this colored surface from your originally from your original geometry. So I did 0.1 because I don't want it to go far. I want it to be relatively close to where the sun's hitting it. Then you set up your sky matrix by inputting your output here into the input up here. And then finally, this parallel and run it, you want to have Boolean toggled to true. As you can see, this radiation analysis presents us with a colorful grid, which represents the amount of kilowatt hours each one of those little grid surfaces is getting. But what happens if we use a different type of day or a different environment? So after choosing different environments throughout different days, we can see the various outputs of kilowatt hours per grid. In Montreal, the amount of kilowatt hours is less than that of El Paso, Texas. And through basic geography, we know that it's hotter down south and the, the sun hits it more directly than if we go north. Moving forward from this as a designer, I chose to focus on the June 21st date, which is in the summer. Because as it's more hot in summer, I wanted to cut down on solar heat gain by adding generative shading design to this component. As you can see, we have our three different environments that we are working in on that June 21st date. But Within each one of these, there's these squares or rectangles that are corresponding with that original grid size from the radiation analysis. 
and we're kind of scaling those down in relation to the outputs that we have. So we take the radiation result and remap the numbers together to create a different domain so that when we go to scale it by the center point of each one of these grids, they will correspond to how much uh, radiant light and radiant sun are hitting that area. After we have our grid scaled down in relation to that radiation analysis, we can start to deconstruct them into indiv individual vertices. And through these vertices, we can take those points and move them in any direction we want. So for example, I used them in the Z direction, so all of these points have been moved up. But perhaps you're working on the wall instead and you want them to move in the X, Y direction. Then you can just change this component here to have them work that way, other than in the Z direction like I do. Either way that you go about this, you're still going to need those vertices to be plugged back into the surface component to create individual sides of your unit. As you can see with my geometry, all the vertices are going in the similar or same direction. But maybe you don't want this for different size grids as they could be more shaded than others. So if we take a list component, we can take each individual output and put them into the groupings of this component to individualize each grid. After sticking with the same time, day, and environment, we can see how helpful this is for our design. The only difference is when we go to plug it back into the radi radiation analysis a second time, we don't use the same geometry and same context. The new geometry are those scaled grids we made before, and the context geometry are the shaders we made in the previous step. Finally, what if we want to provide the best possible outcome for our client? We can start to use Galapagos for this. So as you can see, we have a total radiation here, which is the count of all the grids kilowatt hours. And we can start to plug this into our fitness for Galapagos, as that is the number we want to minimize, because we don't want that much solar radiant heat entering our building. We can then take the genome input and connect it to the different vertexes we are using in our shading device, as this will ultimately be what creates shading for that radiant heat. So as Galapagos starts to minimize the amount of total kilowatt hours there are, it is also optimizing on where these vertices run in the Z direction. Also minimizing the amount of material we're using for these shading devices. Thank you for watching this walkthrough tutorial. If you have anything to say or need help on anything, leave it in the comments below. See you next time.